Matt, we're good? Good evening, everybody, and welcome to the special meeting of the uh, Council Rock School Board of Directors. Uh, if we could start with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Member roll call, please. Marion McKee? Here. Joe Hidalgo? Here. Christine Marcel? Here. Andy Block? Here. Mark Filek? Here. Ed Tate? Present. Mike Thorward? Here. Denise Brooks? Here. Excellent. Now, before we get started, go to public comment. This special meeting is being held to fill the vacant seat for Region 5, uh, previously held for 19 years by Mr. Jerry Grupp, who has joined us again in the room. Good evening, Jerry. <coughs> if, you, if you speak more than three minutes, my alarm will be going on off tonight. I'd like to welcome Ms. Curry and Mr. Salomon uh, to this. Um, the, uh, well, I guess the format we go through public comments. So uh, is there any public comment to start our evening? No public comment, so we will move directly to the interviews. Um, number one, thank you for uh, coming before us this evening. Uh, I know it can be a little bit intimidating on that side of the table. I would tell you, don't be. Um, we are going to uh, run a, a fair and hopefully comfortable process for you. The way it will work is I'll ask you each to give an opening statement, uh, and then you'll each will give uh, a closing statement. Uh, between those two, you will take questions from each of the board members. Uh, we'll start with Mr. Tate. We'll go all the way around. Ms. Marcel, then we'll come back. Typically in the past, it's been uh, two rounds. But uh, after, if, if we have a full two rounds, I'll ask if anybody has any. Uh, and then you give your closing statements. So we'll then deliberate, um, make an appointment. Uh, take a motion and then swear in the, uh, the candidate. But I do thank you, you both. It's great to have multiple qualified uh, candidates that uh, that are here. Um, so traditionally, it's been give or take two minutes for an opening statement. I'm not going to hold you to that. I'm not going to have to go ten. Uh, and if one does go ten, the other one should try to get there. Um, I'll, I'll ask you this. Does one of you have a choice to go first here? Rather than me picking one first? No. I'm sorry? Ladies first. Okay, so Ms. Curry, you'll go first, and then in, in closing, uh, Mr. Salomon, uh, you'll go first. So, welcome. Thank you. Benjamin Franklin said, an investment in knowledge pays the best interest. Superintendent Frazier, President Block, respected members of the board, Mr. Solomon, and my fellow citizens of the Council Rock School District. I am here today to express my desire to be on the Council Rock School Board. My family and I moved to Holland nine years ago, and one of the primary reasons we did so was because of the school district. We wanted our children to be a part of the academic excellence that the Council Rock School District provides and be given better opportunities for their future. For the past 15 years, I've dedicated my life to education. After graduating from Villanova University with a bachelor's degree in biology and education, I received my master's from Cabrini University with my principal certification and graduated with honors. I've been involved in all aspects of education, starting as a classroom teacher, then moved on to various roles with the School District of Philadelphia Central Office, and I am presently serving as principal of Lesh Elementary in Northeast Philadelphia. On a daily basis, I am asked to make difficult decisions, balancing the best interests of my students, staff, and the community at large. Outside of my professional life, I'm a very active member in the community. I provide charitable outreach and volunteer work through my church. I express my interest for this position now as I do not think that timing could be any better. As my children 
particularly Allison, who's behind me, started her kindergarten journey. I intend to be with her and my other son, who's only one, but when he starts, every step of the way. I believe I possess the strengths, the subject matter knowledge, and a strong desire to do what is in the best interest of not only my children, but of all, all the children in the Council Rock School District. If given the opportunity to serve on the board, I will work hard to ensure that all children in our district are positioned to continue in the long history of academic excellence our great district has achieved for the last few decades. Thank you. Solomon. Good evening and thank you to the Council Rock School District School Board for considering my candidacy. I'm truly honored to be an applicant for the Region 5 seat and to represent the entire Council Rock, Council Rock School District. I'm a Holland resident and I've lived here for the last six years in the district. My wife Deborah and I have been married for 20 years. We have three girls, Emma, Sophia, and Mara, and a just added puppy as of Saturday. Our daughters all attend Council Rock School District schools. Since moving to the district, Council Rock has been an integral part of the family. We were drawn to the district for its quality and education and the opportunity for the students to excel in both academics and extracurricular activities. We have seen this with our own children as they have matured and flourished throughout the different opportunities that have been offered through Council Rock. As a public school graduate myself, I am passionate about public education and continually strive to do what's best for students, teachers, <coughs> administrators, and staff. I believe I bring, I bring a unique perspective to this role as a retired Philadelphia police officer. After a rewarding 25 year career on the police force, I retired early in 2015 after I was injured in the line of duty. I covered all facets of law enforcement throughout my career. However, I quickly found my passion working with kids. I spent a considerable amount of time working with the school district of Philadelphia and identifying at risk youth. These children were either on the verge of committing a crime or becoming a victim of the crime. This process touched many levels, including probation, parole, and incarceration. During that time, I took pride in mentoring and helping kids rise above the violence in the city. Since leaving the police department, I've continued my dedication to children through various volunteer positions here at Council Rock. I currently serve as the president of the Holland Elementary School Parent Teacher Organization, a position I've held for the last four years. In addition to my role as the PTO president, I served on the Parents Advisory Committee for the district, as well as the Council Rock Redistricting Committee. Each of these positions has allowed me to gain a holistic view of the district and better understand some of the challenges and opportunities for our students. I will continue to work towards improving these opportunities for our students and the staff in this great district. In addition to my dedication to the Council Rock School District, I'm heavily involved in our local community. Currently hold the position of president of the Northampton Girls Softball Association. In this role, I oversee the entire softball organization, coach teams, and mentor kids. I find great joy in seeing the kids flourish and build confidence from these extracurricular activities. Given my experience in law enforcement, my passion for public education, and my dedication to the youth in this community, I feel I'm strongly suited for this position, and I will be committed to enhancing the core values of the school district. I have spent a considerable amount of time speaking to the Council Rock community leaders, school board members, the residents throughout the district. It is clear our community leaders and residents have great pride in Council Rock, and I truly care about the children in this district. If given this opportunity to serve on the board, I'm confident I will represent the entire district to continue the great, condition, great tradition and quality of education in Council Rock and its students. To close, I truly appreciate the consideration of the board. I look forward to working with you all and to develop positive, positive solutions to continue to advance the education of Council Rock School District. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we'll start with <coughs> questions. And I, I have to admit, I, you know, I've presided over a lot of meetings, and, and this one makes me a little bit nervous because I, I don't want to forget whose turn it is <laughs> as we go through the process. So this is going to be as comfortable as it will for you guys. Uh, Mr. Salmon, we're going to direct the first uh, question to you. You both have an opportunity to answer the question, but we'll start with Ms. Salmon, and we'll try and go back and forth as best we can. Uh, Mr. Tate, would you like to start, please? I will. Thank you, Mr. Block. Um, thank you both for applying, and uh, thank you both for moving to our community. I think it's an interesting coincidence that you're both uh, recent additions to the Council Rock community. 
And uh, you've been here long enough, I don't need to say welcome, but I'm, I'm glad you're here. And um, I'm interested in hearing, Mr. Solomon, um, what you see as any areas in our fine school district where you see a need for improvement. Where might you see any, any gaps or, or any areas where we're um, perhaps uh, in need of improvement? Uh, good evening, Mr. Tate. Um, great question. Um, I think my background as a police officer obviously puts me right into the safety area. Um, uh, you know, safety concerns in, in any school has always been a priority. When I was a police officer and continues to be now as a father and as a uh, community person in Council Rock, um, it, it's often, you know, I, I, we do a lot of things in this district that, that um, you know, we constantly should be critiquing ourselves. Are we doing it right? Where are we going with this thought process? Um, safety always rises to the top because our academics continue to be strong. Um, the other thing that concerns me uh, that was brought out the academic standards meeting the other evening uh, was the pace, um, uh, the sur pace survey. Uh, there were some areas of that survey that jumped out at me uh, that it, that strictly goes into the safety corridor, if you will, but but you know, right towards the children that attend Council Rock. Uh, I don't want to highlight all the areas that concern me, but obviously that gave us a nice barometer of some things that we can work better towards. Um, and a lot of that will probably start with education, but I think as a school board, it's our job to, to make sure we're going the right direction. Ms. Green, same question to you. Sure. Um, I, I do ag agree with Mr. Solomon. Um, I, I want to add to the safety measure. Um, I think with the school district that's doing so well, um, one of the things that we definitely need to focus on are um, drugs, social media, and bullying in the schools. Um, it is not a topic that is often discussed at, at schools, but um, it is something that I think as our society is changing and our world is changing, it's definitely something that we do need to address. And I um, come up with, you know, positive solutions. I know that this, the uh, Council of Rock School District just received a grant um, for like a safety hotline so that any community member can call, which, which I think it's a, it's a great idea. So you can call anonymously and have that information so that you can help any student. So definitely focusing on safety. Um, one of the things I always say at my school is unless students feel safe, they are not going to learn because their concern is always going to be how they're feeling on the inside. So making sure that every single child that goes to kindergarten all the way up to 12th grade feel safe, uh, regardless of who they are. And then, then the second uh, point that I want to bring out that um, needs to be a focus also is uh, when we're at the top, it's even harder to go higher. So focusing specifically on academic standards and um, the instruction that's taking place in the classroom so that at the top you just keep moving forward because we can't stay stagnant where we are. So keeping it moving forward and providing whether that's professional development for the teachers or whatever it may be, providing that information so that we can get to that next level because you don't want to be stuck and be complacent. You want to keep going and continue to be the best district. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, before we go to Mr. Hidalgo, just because we have him on the phone, Mark, Mr. Bilek, can you hear okay? Yeah, I was taking you off mute. Sorry about that. That's okay. Yeah, so why don't I give you an you. opportunity to ask a, a quick question? This is, uh, Ms. Curie will uh, ask the first time, Mr. Salomon. Okay. Well, so there are, there are a lot of different areas to, um, to focus on as a school board director. And I always like to ask if if you're appointed to the board and then I assume that this that your intention is to run and if you're successful, what would you like to achieve? If you looked back, if there's one thing that you can achieve as a school board director, what do you think that would be? Do you guys hear that question? Can you just repeat yeah, that? Yeah, so just to restate, um, uh, what looking back on service if you're uh, appointed and, and then elected, um, what one thing would you like to accomplish I think the one thing I would like to accomplish is to continue the excellence that the school district um, is known for. As I said previously in my opening statement, one of the, the core reasons why we moved to 
Um, Holland is because of the school district. Um, being an educator myself, I put the research in to really study the school districts around the area. And it was very deliberate that we moved here because of the academic excellence and the reputation. Uh, I grew up in Ben Salem. I went to Ben Salem High School. Um, and, you know, always you're, you're constantly looking around to see, okay, where, where, where is it? That, that I want my kids to grow up. And this, this is where I wanted my kids to grow up because Council Rock was always, always, always known for its academic excellence. And that is one thing that I will want to continue to accomplish. It's, you know, to take us where, from where we are and keep us to continue to grow, um, to work together on the board um, to make that possible. Thank you, Mr. Salomon, question to you. Yes. Uh I agree. The, obviously, the academics are extremely important and continue to be important or else, you know, we'd be out of business, so to speak. Uh, the Council Rock was, again, the reason we moved here. Uh, it was a strong consideration um, for our family and our growing family at the time. Uh, I like a lot of what's going on in the district. There's a great vibe in the district. Uh, there's a lot of there's a lot of community buy into what's going on uh, as we're coming into, you know, we're coming out of the redistricting situation. And in September, we're going to see that roll completely out, um, you know, I, I want to make sure that, that we are continually looking at these numbers, that we make sure that the classrooms are not overfilled, uh, that we have areas of growth in these facilities. And I know we have a lot on our plate and we've done a lot with capital planning, but there's still a lot to do. Um, I think, you know, being on the board, I'd like to see the district continue to grow, uh, you know, in terms of quality buildings, keeping up with these buildings. Um, going to a lot of my PTO meetings, I hear about some of the shortcomings in the buildings. Um, so I think, uh, you know, obviously we can do things. Um, the direction we're going is strong, uh, but we need to be careful that we do it right and, and make sure that, that we have everybody on the same page. Mr. Hidalgo, um, question Mr. Salomon first. Sure. Mr. Salomon, um, thank you. Both of you, Ms. Grant, for, for being here tonight. Um, question was, we have four policy, uh, we have four committee meetings each each month. And uh, I was wondering which one you would be interested in the most, or that interests you in possibly chairing in the future or, or participating in. Thank you. I, I, uh, to directly answer your question, uh, the safety committee obviously would be right in my wheelhouse. Um, along with that, uh, the facility committee would be, you know, something that I, I as I touched on earlier, uh, we have a lot of plans still out there, um, including Rolling Hills uh, and, and some other things, ideas in terms of up at Council Rock South and so be it. Um, I think we also need to touch on all the committees um, uh, so we have a general idea what, what exactly it is. You know, I remember my first parents advisory council meeting and being blown away when Mr. Reinhardt stood up there and talked about the budget and some of the things about the budget. Um, a lot of people don't know that, don't know what goes into running a school district. Um, being well-rounded is something that I, I, I take pride in. Uh, I don't want to be a, uh, you know, I don't know everything. I'd like to learn, uh, but I think it's important that we get a good sense of all the committees. But to answer your direct question, facilities and obviously safety would be a, a top priority for me. Thank you, Mr. Hidalgo. Um, every day, this is what I do. Um, I have to decide on different policies that need to be made within the school district, with the, within my school, I should say, not the district, but um, work on finances. Um, and I'm sure you know Philadelphia has very limited funds. So, you know, figuring out, well, how are we going to spend these funds to best meet the needs of our students? Um, and then obviously academic standards is something that I work on a daily basis to make sure that, you know, teachers can unpack the standards and move forward to give our students the best opportunities. <clears throat> looking at facilities, looking at the building, all of that is something that I do every day. So, um, you know, I, I will not shy away from any of the committees, but um, I think my strength would be best suited with the Academic Standards Committee. Um, that is where my passion is. And like I said, moving every child forward and making sure that they make uh, the growth that they can make, um, I, I think my, my uh, Strength lies in the Academic Standards Committee. Thank you both. Thank you. And again, thank you both. Really appreciate you stepping up and your interest in serving. Um, 
as Mr. Hidalgo referenced, there are four committees um, that meet along with our regular board meetings. And uh, seeing you both as very active, involved people with young families, many commitments to your time. I'm just curious about your expectations in terms of the time commitment being on the board and um, you know, your expectations in terms of how you would manage the, the amount of time it takes to serve with us. Great question. Um, so this is something I always tell my husband, we all have the same 24 hours and it really is how we prioritize that time. Um, and I understand that this is a very large commitment. And like I said, um, my, my daughter is starting kind or started kindergarten. Um, and I really want to be a part of that learning process. Uh, and my, my job is very time consuming. However, I am committed to making sure that I am 100% there for her and I want to be 100% there for the, the students that are in this district as well. Um, I, it, it really is about prioritizing the different needs, um, doing what I need to do in a timely manner, not procrastinating, um, and you know, just serving the district. So while I understand that it is going to be a challenge, um, I am up for it. Um, it is a time commitment. I get that, but you know, it, it's going to be te a teamwork, right? All of us are in the same boat. We're all coming from the uh, you know, same type of lifestyle. We all have jobs that are demanding. We all have families that are demanding. So, um, you know, I, I will look to you guys for that support system um, and we will work together to make it happen. Good evening, Mrs. McKay. Thank you, it's a great question. And you stole my thunder with that word you use in teamwork. Uh, one of the things I think that, that is underestimated when you're on a board, from my opinion, when you put a strong team around you, uh, anything can happen. Uh, I take great pride in, in my PTO uh, executive board that we're a team. Um, you know, my, my, my parents, we meet when we need to meet. Uh, we do a lot of phone calls and emails. Uh, and I do the same thing with the softball organization. I have 15 board members there and it's, we break it up. Um, I have three girls that are demanding. I have a wife that's demanding. I now have a puppy that's demanding. Um, my life has been busy as long as I can tell you. Um, for 25 years, again, as being a police officer, there was times I came home, took a shower, went back to work. Uh, we do what we do. I, 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 I beat to a different drum sometimes, uh, only because I can manage a heck of a lot of things. Uh, I have a lot of time during the day, obviously, because I'm retired. I, I do have an evening part-time job that I work. Uh, my bosses are extremely flexible. They are completely supportive of what I want to do and where I need to be. Um, <laughs> I have, I will not second guess this commitment uh, this was a long time and a lot of conversations that brought me to this table. I'm very, very um, happy to be here. Thank you. Thank you. That's a great question, Mr. McHugh. I was going to ask that. <laughs> One of you will find out that during these appointments, we all come with questions. So I think that's really good when somebody doesn't ask. I wanted to uh, compliment you both on beautiful families that are here. That's great to see that they support you. Uh, your parents are doing a great job. Process. Um, my question for you is uh, a simple and open-ended is, is how do you view the role of a board school board director? And Mr. Solomon, that's to you first. It's a great question. Um, you know, reviewing the last several appointments to the board, uh, I went back and looked at every question generally that the board asked. This was never asked. That's a great question. Thank you, Mr. Block, for doing that. Um, but one of the things that I did, you know, speaking to each one of you, whether it was in person over coffee or on the phone or on your ride home from work, um, the thing that I thought was uh, interesting was your, the level of dedication that everybody has. Um, it's easy to sit in front of a computer and Google things. So I did what makes an effective school board member. And the ironic thing is I found a site um, that hit a lot of exactly where I'm coming from. You need to be in touch with your community. You need to know what they want and what their level of expectation is. They want transparency. They want an honest answer. Uh, and I think you can all attest going through the redistricting process, the amount of emails you got from the community that care. Um, being in front of a lot of things uh, is important to me. Uh, getting rid of rumors quickly is extremely important to me. Um, I will continue doing what I've done for the last several years in our community, and that's being, you know, the point of contact for questions, answers, and concerns. It's a big, big job up there that you folks do, 
and it's important that the community knows where they stand with you. Thank you. Thank you for your question. Um, I think there are several components to uh, as a role of a good uh, school board director. I think one of the first things is to be the voice for your community. Um, you are representing uh, your constitu constituents and it's important that you are the voice for them, that you listen to them, that you reach out to them. Um, on that note, communication is very important. It is important that parents know what is going on. It is important that all of the stakeholders know what is going on so that um, they can you know, understand everything before making decisions that are important. Um, I also believe that the ultimate goal is while we serve our regions, ultimately our goal is to work together as a team, as a good group of uh, directors looking at pros and cons, really looking at the data, whether that's hardcore data or whether that's you know information that the community members are giving you and coming together and making a decision that is in the best interest of the entire school district. So I, I, I really do think that is the ultimate goal of, uh, of a, a good board director. So and just a quick follow up, I'm, I'm curious as you explored the role, um, Ms. Curry and first and then Ms. Stronko, do you, do you understand the, uh, from a legal perspective, of the role or the responsibility of the board what we really have to do, because what you both talked about was really, really important, but from a legal perspective, um, it's, it's a little bit different. I was curious if you've done any research to understand what our responsibilities are there. Um, I would say from a legal perspective, I think it's important for us to be fair um, in this position. Uh, we are held to a higher standard. Um, you know, we, obviously we can't lean one, like say for example for a, selecting a contract between different uh, entities. You know, real, you really have to be fair in that um, and conversations have to be limited, especially with the public. Um, confidentiality is important. So all of those are, are, are legal things that we have to consider. Mr. Block, to answer your question directly, I, I did not review the legal procedure regarding a school board, uh, but I would assume, and not to, to, to echo what uh, has already been said, but I mean, I, I generally understand what, what separates us from the, you know, other people, so to speak. Yeah, and the, the reason I asked the question was uh, more so to help you really understand what it is that you're getting into, because the things that you talk about are the fun, important sides of the job, the parts that aren't so fun that are really important are the writing of policy, um, which comes up every every day. The <laughs> um, levying of taxes, certainly, you know, not not, not fun. Uh, and the hiring and the support of the superintendent. Um, and, and those are really at, at the core of what uh, we need to do. And the reason I wanted to ask that is because it's important to understand how you see the role of board director, because it's nine people with very different backgrounds who so are doing those those three things. Um, move to the next question, Ms. Brooks. Thank you. Um, thank you both uh, for stepping up. It takes a lot of courage, and uh, it's a true sign of your uh, commitment to uh, wanting to participate in this and step up, and it's great. And it is, I want to agree with what Andy said, it's very nice to see your families here supporting you too. So uh, to echo on what Andy just finished on, um, about nine different people working together. Uh, um, over the years, a lot of people have sort of asked me different questions about, you know, would I be qualified to be on the school board or, you know, maybe I would do this or whatever. And the interesting thing is there's no one set of criteria. It's not like uh, you go on LinkedIn and you look at a job description and it's like the qualified candidate will have this and then you check the boxes and yeah, you're in. Because it's a really broad range of, of qualifications a lot of different backgrounds could lead to a successful school director. But at the heart, nine of us are sitting at a table and we each bring something different to, uh, to the table and to the discussions. So I'd like to try to get a little bit into um, what you think you would add to our table uh, that may be a little different and maybe a way that you could also get at it um, rather than just simply stating you know, the way you approach your work is maybe you can share with us something in your background where you faced 
you know, you were part of a situation, an example in your work or personal life or something where you had to make a difficult decision and work with other people and how you fit in in that role in, in another sort of board, so to speak. Okay. Um, I think I'm uniquely qualified for two uh, different reasons. I think one of the first, um, and you sort of mentioned, is really what I do. Um, education, like I said, is my passion and my background. Um, on a daily basis, every single day, you never know what, what happens when you step into that building, sometimes even before you step into that building. So it really is about quick thinking on your feet, um, making decisions that ultimately results in the best interest of the students, no matter what it is that happens. Those 940 students that are that are in that building are my priority. So I think that's definitely something that I bring to the table is this is what I do for a living. This is what I do every single day is make those, whether it's policy decisions, safety decisions, whatever it is, make those decisions that are in the best interest of, of the students. The second thing um, that I bring to the table, and I'm going to tie the tie boat together in a second, but definitely diversity. Um, this is a district that is going growing in diversity. Currently, from the research that I did, we are about 15% um, made up of students that come from a diverse background. And I do believe that our students need to see role models that are also diverse, um, and it is important for them to see that. I was not born in this country. I actually came here when I was nine years old. I was in a ESOL program. Um, you know, I was pulled out um, and I hated it. I hated being pulled out because you come back to a classroom and you know, my friends are like, well, where did you go? And I hated that. So you asked for a specific example and that really is what resonated um, in my uh, mind right now. My school before I got there was a, a full-time pull-out program for ESOL students. So for the literacy block, which was 120 minutes, students were pulled out by their ESOL teacher and they were taught curriculum that was not the curriculum that was grade level material. So I had to make a really hard decision, one that was not um, liked by probably 90% of my staff members. And that was to have to slowly phase in a fully inclusion program within the school. Um, the first year we started, we uh, implemented it where 45 minutes was spent on guided reading. So the ESOL teacher would go into classrooms and students were not pulled out, but they would provide the support within a 45 minute time frame. And this year we've moved on to the ESOL teacher being in the literacy block for the entire 120 minutes. And the students 100% are not pulled out at all. So I, I, that was a very tough decision that I had to make. Um, but it was, once again, in the best interest of the students. We have a 36% ESOL population in my building. So if you think about that, that, that's a significant amount. And to revamp a program over two years so that students aren't being pulled out but are being provided grade level material, all the while knowing that a significant amount of my staff members were not for it. You know, that was a huge decision that had to be made. And I'm happy to say that today our, our, our results were actually released um, by the school district. And it, the school district has a report card. And today we got a score of 100% model status because our ESOL students made significant amounts of growth over the last two years. So while it was a hard decision to make, it was definitely one that was needed. And I think my background, my personal experiences being pulled out of ESOL, stories that I heard from students, from parents, all of that played into it. And I think that's something that I'm gonna bring to the table is that different perspective of thinking, um, both, you know, like I said, as a, as a mom, as a teacher, as a student that was an ESOL student, coming in and as a, as a building administrator to, to make the best choices. It's an interesting question. I think, you know, the, the interesting thing about it, the school board and again, any board is the diversity of that you bring to the table of the board itself. Uh, I, I can't speak at, at to, to length about 
my background in education because I have, I have absolutely no background in education. But what I can bring to the table is what I've done for the last five years at Holland Elementary School as a PTO president and vice president, working with the staff, working with the, the, the community, and, and building a foundation for those kids there. There are 334 kids at that school um, that, that I take great pride in making sure they get uh, whatever we can't give them from a school district budget. Watching that and watching them grow under that umbrella has been extremely rewarding to me. When I joined the, or when I, when I went to the redistricting committee, um, talk about the hardest decision to make, was trying to figure out a way to balance the school district and do it effectively, knowing that you're gonna be moving families all over the district. There was many nights that I came home from that meet, those meetings and couldn't go to sleep right away, knowing that you know, those dots on the map that we continually looked at were kids. Um, I don't know at the end of the day um, if, if we made a lot of people happy, and I'm sure we didn't, but it was something that needed to be done. And, and we stressed over those decisions. Um, and we'll see in September the, the, what happens when we do it. So I think what I bring to the table is, is how, to, how to forge a relationship with the community, how to reach out and make them part of the process. And that's a big deal for me because without the community with watching over us and helping us, it's going to be hard to do anything positive to move forward. Thank you. Ms. Salmon, back here to Coral Board. Thank you, Andy. Um, thanks for being here. Um, I'll segue into this. Um, uh, behind you is Mr. Grupp, who's been here for a while. Um, for two-ish years, I sat out there in the audience. I came to every meeting, and I learned a lot. I learned a lot from everyone on here. And one of the things I learned was uh, it's not just the relationship with the community. It's the relationship with your fellow board members and how you work together and the magic number, which is five, because none of us get to decide anything. We have to uh, at least have a majority that decides. Um, so one of the things I look for when... I can select a, a new board member versus the voters who are really supposed to is, can I work with people? So can you both tell me, you know, what have you learned about us? How have you tried to work with us up to now? Um, how are you going to do it moving forward? Oh, I'm sorry. I apologize. Thank you, Dr. Dr. Thorward. Um, <laughs> Again, this process was, was years in the making. Um, I can honestly tell you about five years ago, I first started having conversations about considering a school board position. And um, Mr. Krupp was not was still on the board, obviously, at that point. Um, talking to each one of you, talking to the community members, um, and getting a real sense of, of you as a person. And there was quite a few times where, where I left a talking or hung up or, or left the meeting with, with a school board member and or as I was leaving, a question was, how come you really didn't ask much about the school board? And I think my answer was generally the same was, I generally know what you do. It's a matter if I can work with you and getting to know the person that you are. And what I found incredibly rewarding during this whole process was the level of care that each one of you put into this. I'm not, we're all not gonna sit there and agree on everything. I think that you get to that point there has to be a compromise to some degree, and you move on from it. You know, our goal is to educate and help the kids in Council Rock, and I think we can accomplish that. And the diverse backgrounds that we bring to the table does that effectively. I think the relationship is going to be somewhat like a marriage. You're not always going to agree. Sometimes you're going to agree to disagree. You're going to try to convince your partner why your viewpoint is the right viewpoint, whether that's through data or whatever it takes. But I think at the end of the day, you have to know that you have each other's back. No matter what happens, the, the nine board members have to be on the same page in the, in the public eye. Um, we can disagree behind the doors. You know, as my husband and I say, whether, if we have a disagreement, it has to be not in front of the, our kids. They don't need to see that we're not on the same page. So making sure that, you know, when we're behind closed doors, you say what you need to say, um, you know, but always being respectful. But in the public eye, always, you know, being is one. 
um, because ultimately our goal is one, is to make sure that the school district is moving forward and every student is learning. So making sure that respect is always there. Thank you. Marcel, I'm waiting patiently over there. I have been, thank you, Mr. Bach. Um, I wanted to thank you both for being here tonight. I vividly remember the night that I did the same thing. And so I just wanted to thank you. And I know it's tough. You guys are doing a great job. Um, I wanted to actually ask you a question that I um, vividly remember Mr. Block asking me <laughs> <laughs> when I was sitting in that, in that, at that table in those chairs. Um, and essentially it was, you know, I'm going to paraphrase it, but it was to the extent of, um, you know, obviously you both have a connection to Council Rock and a commitment to the community, which is fantastic. Um, but after tonight, only one of you, you know, will be appointed. And so with that in mind, you know, what do you plan to do if you are not selected this evening? Um, you know, keeping in mind that obviously we hope you still want to be very much involved with Council Rock. So yes, 100%, um, um, as I said earlier, my, my child is starting out, so I plan to be um, an active member in her schooling, at, um, in her school. Um, and you know, my intent is, like I said, to be an active participant. And if that is best served by running um, in the future, then you know, that is definitely something that I'm interested in um, you know, with, you know, with everyone's support. So that is something that I wanna do um, regardless my heart is with the kids and my heart will always be to help in whatever way I can to, to uh, move them forward to where they need to go. Good evening, Mrs. Marcel. Um, nothing's going to change for me. Uh, I, I'm very happy being and being effective at, at, at the level over at Holland as the PTO president. Um, I touch kids every day. 334 kids get exactly what we can do for them on a daily basis. Uh, I know come this weekend, I can go coach a softball team and be very excited about coaching a softball team. Uh, I know in a couple of weeks, I'll be running around with the little kids and, and teaching them how to play softball as well. My world, I mean, obviously I'm here for a reason. I'm here because I want the job. Uh, but at the end of the day, I will continue doing everything that I've already spoke about. Uh, I've been extremely active in Council Rock and, and Northampton Township in general, nothing changes. Um, there's an election this year. Uh, my intention is to be there and, and representing this region uh, for the election. Um, and I'm very happy to do it. Um, it's all about the kids for me. It has been for a long time. Thank you. If I could just build on, on that question since you mentioned it, <laughs> it's unfortunate for three candidates that we can only but this chair is up uh, in the primary election. Uh, and I'm curious, um, same question to both of you. If you're not appointed tonight, do you intend to run for this seat in the spring? So? Yes, I do. I do. Kristen, do you have another question? You want to come back this way or are you good? Are you sure? Yeah. Wow. Okay. Well, thank you. Um, so my other question that I was debating and um, asking you, um, so earlier um, Mr. Hidalgo and Ms. McKee had talked about the committees and obviously the importance of them to the school board. And I was wondering if you could comment on a recent um, decision that was made at the committee level um, that you are in favor of or, are in, or you're opposed perhaps. Goes to Ed first. Uh, no, that's great. Sorry. <laughs> so, because I am just starting out, um, and I did review several of uh, the the minutes um, on the website, but I can't say that I can specify any specific committee decisions that has been made. I do know that. Um, you know, several grants were brought to the table and one of the grants, um, I believe through the academic committee was a STEM grant. Um, and I believe I, it was a $35,000 grant that was awarded. Um, you know, that's definitely up my alley. Um, 
and, and I'm, pa I'm glad that that was, you know, um, written and the state awarded it to us. So that's the, uh, as globally we're moving towards STEM um, and the fact that the committee thought, you know, had that forward thinking to come up with the idea, write the grant and get that fund so that it can be utilized for the district. I think it's great. Um, definitely, you know, moving in the direction of continuing that excellence. It's a great question. Uh, since I, I live over in obviously the Holland area uh, and we touch <laughs> so close to our other neighboring schools, I've been closely watching the Rolling Hills uh, facilities, uh, you know, set up and, and moving forward with that. Um, very interested in keeping an eye on that as, as we know classroom sizes um, and with the whole redistricting that we're setting up for in September. Um, it's a big deal for me to keep an eye on that school that we're, that the plans that are in place make sense today, tomorrow, and the future. Uh, I'm going to go Mr. Biley. Are you there? I'm here, Mark. I, I am here, Andy. It, uh, I'm actually watching on YouTube because it sounds better, so it takes me a second. That, um, there's a lag. Like, that's okay. Have you got another question? I don't at this time, okay. uh, but I'd like to reserve the ability to come back if I have one. Absolutely. I'll come back to you uh, after Mr. Tate. Uh, Dr. Thor, do you have another one? I do. Um, we just had meetings uh, before this meeting, and one of the things that the topic was redistricting and its impact on our administrators here. And, and uh, can both of you tell me your opinions, uh, what, what impact redistricting has had on you personally, and what would you have done maybe differently, recognizing that you, know, you walk into something a little late in the game? But uh, um, I'd like to know, Again, what, how has it impacted you, and, and what would you do differently? No, I apologize. I'm losing track here. Sorry. Uh, well, as, as I stated earlier, I was a part of the committee, so I, I have uh, you know some, I don't want to say expertise, because I don't have any expertise. I sat on the committee and was very proud to be a part and representing our school. Um, the, the impact on me directly is that in September, uh, my daughter's school is going to receive 80 kids from Hillcrest. Um, it's going to directly impact the school. Um, it's going to um, create 80 new faces that we're thrilled to see. It's going to bring in multiple families, obviously, that are hopefully happy to be a part of our school. But they will be happy when we're done um, meeting with their staff and, and the parents that are attached to that school. Um, it, it's a big deal in September. Uh, I, I think I touched on it earlier, um, but looking at it from a from a district level, um, it, it's going to impact many communities and many schools. We're moving kids um, from the Richborough area up to Wrightstown, and a lot of kids out of Wrightstown into different schools up north. Um, directly on me, uh, I think you know one kid being moved affects everybody. Um, I said early on that that whether you stay in the school or you come to the school, it's going to affect you. Um, there was a point in the process when we were looking over maps and, and things were being rolled out to the public where my daughter said to me, Dad, all my friends are leaving. Um, what do you say? Um, it causes a big pause in the family. Um, I'm not sure she understood that it, I was probably a part of that, so to speak, as being a committee member, but it, it impacted my family immediately. Um, Fortunately, Holland's not losing any students, uh, but we are picking up 80 kids. So it will affect my kids directly for next year and many years down the road. Um, I'm extremely optimistic that the plan is, is, is solid. Um, but again, I, I, I pause and, and I want to ensure that what we've done and we have in place is the right thing and will continue to be the right thing. Thanks. So my children are one of the few that will be um, moving to another school because of redistricting. Um, Allison is currently attending Hillcrest, but she will be moving, like I said. Um, and, you know, I really appreciated all of the email communication that was sent out as a part of the redistricting process. Um, and that was some of the hardest work, I'm sure, that you guys had to do as a team 
to make some of those decisions knowing that families and lives are impacted. So um, some of the, some hard difficulties are also coming for the families at this point. I think September is going to be a very hard month. And I think the, the more care that is given to September, um, I, I think would be great. Um, I, I know I, I received a letter from the administrator from the new school, which made me feel a little bit better. Uh, it was very welcoming. Um, and the question you want, part of the question you asked is what's the impact on the administrators? I think the impact is very difficult on administrators because they are the face of the school. So oftentimes they're who parents go to, to talk to them about their frustrations about anything specifically redistricting. So I think as much support that we can provide to the, the building administrators, I think it's very important. Um, I, and I think there is a solid plan in place. I know that open houses and different events are being planned at the different schools so that parents feel welcome at the new school. So I think that is a great thing, but I think really thinking about what September is gonna look like um, because it is gonna be difficult on families and it is gonna be difficult on children, not just the children that are moving, but also the children that currently exist at that school because you're a, a whole brand new set of kids are coming in. So what's the plan for kids to kind of interact with each other so that that transition can be a little bit smoother for them? Um, one of the good things is though that children do make that transition much better than adults do. So. You know, that, that definitely is a good thing, but um, just thinking about that as we move forward is also important. I don't actually have any specific question left on my list that hasn't been asked. So I guess I'll just turn it around. Uh, is there anything that you had hoped we would ask or something that you wanted to share that you haven't had an opportunity to express yet? What would you say, oh, is it my turn? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, what would you say is the most difficult part of being a board member? You're on the clock, by the way. Oh, you're asking <laughs> us? <laughs> you asked. Well, one part of my commitment as a president was to keep these meetings nice and short. <laughs> <laughs> it's all night. I mean, I'll, I'll just answer and just say, I mean, juggling competing priorities, different personalities, politics, uh, misconceptions, whisper down the lane, not everything is fair. I mean, there are difficult <coughs> things, but the flip side of it is, is that it's tremendously rewarding. And um, knowing that you can have an impact on an entire community is a very powerful thing. So staying focused on what really matters is what gets you through those difficult things. Mr. Solomon, anything that you haven't had a chance to say that you'd like to say? To no, I, 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 I think the level of questions this evening were, were fantastic and continue to be fantastic. And I hope you're getting a sense of both of us and they're not canned answered, so to speak. Um, there's a lot of thoughts going into both the questions and the answers. Yes, you both have been wonderful tonight. At this point, I don't have any further questions. Mr. Dalgo? Sure, sure. A little bit more. Um, so <coughs> you, you've both said that student achievement, success of students, that's why we're all here, you know, and we measure the benchmarks uh, across our peers, across the Commonwealth. We're, we're doing really well. Um, when you get into this position, you realize it's not just the academics, but you have to balance also the, the teachers' needs, the staff, the, the, the associations, and then the other part would be the stakeholders, the taxpayers, you know, in general. So you have three pooling um, uh, needs that you have to balance, and I would just like you uh, both to take a minute to try to uh, tell me your feelings on how would you balance those three different uh, competing needs when you're on the board or how you see it. I'm not real clear of your question, Mr. O'Donnell, I'm sorry. Uh, well, see, we have basically the students that we have to, uh, needs that we have to uh, 
make sure that they're getting a good education. You have taxpayers who are wanting us to do it at the best economically uh, feasible rate. And then the teachers who also have to be compensated and given um, compensation for what they're, they're doing. So when I talk about this question, it might even just be asking about you know, tax increases, teachers' negotiations, and all of these things, where the priorities would be, you know, for you. Okay. So, I mean, when you look at, when you look at our budget uh, every year, basically, you, you know the largest percentage is tied into teachers' contracts. Um, outside of that, we have to work within the confines of, of what's left, so to speak. Um, being, being attached to the school district for the last five or so years, you know, I see it every day when I sit down with my school principal and we discuss additional <coughs> needs um, that, that he may want or the staff may want. And always for the last five years, my question has been, can your budget do that? Can you cover that with your own costs? And many times he can't. So that's why we have the PTOs. And we've been effective in putting those extra things in the classrooms that rise above the budget. And, and you know, I, I've said this to multiple times during our, our monthly meetings. You know, when you factor in the amount of money that the PTO raises for our schools, just at the 10 elementary levels, you know, being, being frugal, it's probably $400,000. Um, you know, I know in the last three years how much we've spent on Chromebooks. I know how much we're prepared to spend on Chromebooks moving forward. Um, that's the type of stuff that doesn't get funneled into the large budget. But that's my budget, or that's our budget. That's our school PTO's budget. And I see it throughout the district where every school uh, PTO has that budget that, that fills those needs. So we balance as much as everybody else, you know, what the needs of the school and the staff is. And I have a very open door policy with our staff. If you want it, come get it. You know, give us a reason to buy it. Um, the other night we bought $650 worth of glasses so the kids can look at the rocks a little deeper and get better detail. Um, is it the biggest purchase in the world? No. Will it benefit 60 kids? Yes. Will it make them better kids? I would hope so. I mean, to look at a rock and, and where else does that piece of material or that piece of equipment take you? It's, it's endless. So I think we have a responsibility. I mean, just like any budget and any board that you sit on, you have a responsibility to your customers, which is our tax base. Um, I, I moved here uh, from uh, my oldest daughter, who's now in, in, in South. Um, she was in a Catholic school out just outside the city. Uh, I know what I paid in tuition. Um, the, tax, the tax dollars here, I know where they're going. Very happy where they're going. Uh, but we, we have a responsibility to uh, our customers. And, you know, I, I take great pride in, in, in ensuring that the budgets at both of the levels of the boards that I sit on are, are right uh, and, and are justified at all times. So um, that's, that's where I come from in this whole thing. I, I hope that answered your question. Thank you. I think all three stakeholders are very important. Uh, but I said, as I stated before, I think um, my priority would always lie with the students. Um, what is it that the students need to make that progress forward? Um, but it's also true what they say, if you don't feed the teachers, they'll eat the students. So they, you have to um, keep them happy as well. So, um, uh, you know, as a building principal, making sure that they have what they need. Um, so s setting a budget, but talking to the teachers first to see, okay, what are your needs? So let's, here's our budget, let's prioritize in what you feel are our students' needs, how we can move them forward, whatever that material is. Then we can always reach out to the PTO. We can also always write grants. That's definitely something that is available. Um, our teachers at my school, um, something that they do is write donors choose grants all the time. And 100% of them get funded. I know that sounds simple, but you know, if there is a need that, that, that the district just can't fulfill or the school just can't fulfill, there are other avenues that, you know, that can service that as well. And in terms of our taxpayers, most of our, our uh, taxpayers moved here because of the school district. And as long as the communication is clear as to how that money is being spent and that it, it is being spent for the betterment of their children, which are their most valuable possession, 
I don't know that any taxpayer is going to have any issue um, with that money being spent for the children. Mr. Kenny, any further questions? No, I'd rather put my time into comment or two when, we're, when, when we get to that point. Okay, are there any other questions from the board at this point? <coughs> Mr. Bailey, do you have any further questions? I do not. Thank you. Excellent. So with that, we'll move to closing statements. Uh, I believe Mr. Salmon, uh, you'll have the floor first. <coughs> I just want to say thank you. I mean, it's a, it's a cold evening. We're all here in this wonderful, warm building at Chancellor Center. Uh, I appreciate your time and your dedication to you, what you do daily for these kids at Council Rock. Uh, I deeply appreciate the time that you took to talk to me. Um, again, whether it was on the phone or for a quick cup of coffee, um, and in Mr. Grupp's case, it was a breakfast. But sitting down with Mr. Grupp and, and whoever you choose, uh, obviously I think you have two great applicants here. Um, I wouldn't want to be in your seat to decide. But sitting down with Mr. Grupp and learning from his 19 years of sitting on this board, um, I've often said when I was a police officer, there's times where you'd look at a boss leave and say, man, I'm glad he's leaving. And I always would say, who's going to replace him? Who's going to replace the talent that you're leaving? Uh, Mr. Grupp's been here a long time. and and the hour or so I had with him at breakfast was very fulfilling, and you got a good sense of, of a man that's that's been dedicated his life to, to the kids at Council Rock. Um, I think it's it's a rewarding situation. I'm extremely thrilled to be a part of this process. I'm looking forward to working with you if chosen, um, and if not, obviously uh, I'll be running in an election and hopefully sitting there thereafter. Um, I do. Uh, and I just love this for a second, if I could steal some thunder, uh, and it's on delay, so we won't get it for a couple seconds. Um, but Mr. Bilek has a saying that I think is fantastic. Every decision that you make, is it beneficial to the students? Does it drive academic excellence? And is it fair to the stakeholders, Mr. Odago? Um, it's, it's, a, it's a great statement, um, and I don't like to borrow people's thunder, but I, when I do, I want to give them um, the props that I did and, and I read that the other night and watched him uh, it was during an interview process uh, and when he said it it really drove home exactly it continues my core values it's always been about the kids and uh, I, again thank you for your time this has been a great experience so apparently I miss a nice breakfast next time thank you Mr. Solomon all of the board members Dr. Frazier, all of the administrators who are here and everyone here for your time today. I am humbled and motivated by your passion for our children and it is clear through the questions that you asked. As I said before, my children have just begun their educational journey and ultimately that is why I do not have the same level of time spent with the district so far. However, that will change. Now is the most appropriate time for me to be involved with the district, and I am excited at the prospect of supporting the various schools as we embark on this journey. I hope that through our conversation this evening, I have elaborated on the intent as to why I applied for this position and expressed why I would bring value to the board. It would be an honor to serve with such respectable members who want the best for the district. The position that you hold is definitely not an easy one. It is a selfless job, and I apply, applaud you for your service to our community. What I bring to the table is a unique perspective, and I'm sure that you will agree that all best decisions are made once you have reflected on all the viewpoints of a situation. Reviewing the data, whether that is your hardcore facts or feedback from the community, a more better informed decision can be made that is in the best interest of all involved. I also bring with me knowledge about education and knowledge about the social and emotional development of children. I am able to look at things both as a parent, as a community member, and as a principal before making hard decisions that will impact schools. Hard work, integrity, passion for what I do, willingness to learn, willingness to listen, 
and sound judgment are some of the traits that I bring with me. At the end of the day, no matter what I do, my goal is to leave the world a better place than what I found it. I will work hard to ensure that I support the school district to help continue its academic excellence, to help bridge the gaps that currently exist and meet the needs of its stakeholders to the best of my ability. As the district's vision states, I am a true believer in the success of every student every day. It is important that we meet every student where they are and help move them to the next level in a safe and nurturing environment. I will do my part to continue to make this vision a re reality. I thank you for your time. Thank you. And uh, thank you for, uh, for both uh, candidates. You both represented yourselves extremely well. We covered a lot of ground. Uh, and I appreciate the question from my fellow board members. At this point, the board will begin, begin uh, our discussion uh, and deliberation. Um, we won't go around the table in order per se, but uh, is there anybody who wants to? Comment first. Are we leaning? I, I missed the last one. So. <laughs> yeah, this is, we're moving to deliberation. Okay. Now, so. Okay. I, I'm sorry. I I, I miss. I miss <laughs> you. <laughs> Would you like to go first? If not, I'll jump to Mr. Biden. No, I'll, I'll certainly go first. Okay. Um, as I stated in one of my questions, um, the magic number on this board is five. One of us alone can't do anything. Um, it it takes a majority of us. Um, I learned that the hard way out there for years and uh, many breakfasts and discussions with Mr. Grupp. Um, so again, I, I very rarely get to pick uh, school directors. The voters should do that and, and usually do, but this is a unique situation and there's been several of them on this board. Um, so my leaning is towards someone who will collaborate with me will pick up the phone and interact with me, will argue with me, um, but in the end of the day is willing to reach out and work with me. Um, no offense, ma'am, but uh, Mr. Solomon has been doing that for about four months so or more with me. So my leaning right now is towards Mr. Solomon for this this spot. Thank you, Dr. Thor. Uh, Mr. Bailey, uh, do you have any comments at this time? Sure. Um, so I want to thank you both for uh, coming forward. It is not easy, I'm sure, to sit there. I, I uh, hadn't experienced it, but um, I'm sure it's not uh, a difficult or an easy task. I, um, I, I think that uh, Ed Solomon has really uh, put the work in, uh, both with the PTOs and the other board that he's been on, and also just in um, making sure that he had contact with the board members learned what we were looking for and let us know about uh, himself. So again, that, that doesn't detract from the other candidate at all, but at this point and this evening, um, uh, we'll be supporting Ed Sullivan. Mr. Tate, you have any conversation? Or? Thank you, yes, I'm prepared. Uh, you know, we have two outstanding candidates today and I hope both of you are involved with the school district for a long time to come. Um, you know, you can since you have relatively young children and, and uh, I'm sure that, that, you know, you're going to enjoy the time that you devote to the school district every minute of it. Um, I think, um, uh, Ms. Curran, uh, your ideas are terrific. Your, your academic background and your experience is outstanding. I love your ideas. Um, I especially made note of your observation that with the <coughs> implementation of redistricting, um, the administrators at the school level are going to need extra support from the administration and, and the district and the board. And I think that uh, is a very astute observation. Um, I hope that you find ways to be involved in the district. Um, we will, as, as we go forward, continually form ad hoc groups for projects such as redistricting, although that won't be anytime soon, thankfully. Um, a redistricting committee, a technology committee, a facilities committee, those sort of things. I hope you find those opportunities to become involved. I say that because um, I'm certainly uh, favoring Mr. Solomon based on his experience working with the school district and his, um, particularly his 
involvement with the redistricting committee, which did excellent work and um, took on a very difficult challenge and met that. So um, my support is for Mr. Solomon. Thank you. We've got three board members we haven't heard from. Any of you like to? Uh, I also want to thank each of you. Um, you know, your willingness to serve, and I have a great deal of respect for your experience and your talents that you would, you know, you've offered to bring to the board and to Council Rock. Uh, really impressed with both of you, and I thank you. I agree with what I've heard from my colleagues. Uh, Ms. Curran, you are so genuine and sincere in your. Uh, passion for education and for putting children first. And I would love to see you contribute that in whatever capacity to Council Rock School District, whether it's, um, we'll, we'll be having some comprehensive planning coming up. I would really love to see you bring that to us because I agree with Mr. Tate, you have wonderful ideas and a really unique perspective for our district. However, I have to say in Mr. Solomon's favor, the fact that you have served on uh, redistricting committee, you've been involved and very knowledgeable about facilities, capital planning, um, your involvement in the community, your connections in the community, I think is something that would also bring great value to the board and has already brought great value to our district. So having said that, I would also be in support of Mr. Salmon at this time. Thank you, Ms. McKee. Ms. Marcel. This is this is very impressive. Um, um, I, I've never been 100% comfortable with these kinds of things. It's a, you know, a difficult thing because really this is a position um, for the people to decide. That's the very nature of it. And it is a unique situation to know that four months from now, roughly, there will be an election and that will be uh, allowed to happen. Um, and, you know, I think experience is important, but it's also, you know, there are certain things that can be taught and learned. And um, I, I value, uh, you know, the contributions that Mr. Solomon has made. But I think Ms. Kurian brings something to the table that is more diverse than I've seen in a long time. And so uh, I would support her. Um, I would also like to thank both of you. Uh, I, again, have these memories um, from when I was sitting in that seat, and I know it's difficult. Um, uh, similar to Mr. Thorwart, I uh, began coming to school board meetings before I even had children in Council Rock, just because there were some things that I needed to know about, and I wanted to make sure that I was a part of that community. Um, you know, community is, is, is so important to our district. And so, um, you know, I would say for me, that involvement means so much because I spent so much time before I was here doing that. And so um, I too am, you know, leaning towards Mr. Salomon just because that is where, you know, really my roots of being interested in the school board um, came from and just being committed to Council Rock and spending so many volunteer hours before you're in this seat uh, to me means a lot. Um, but on the other hand, Ms. Carrying, your experience is wonderful. And I really hope that you'll use this as an opportunity maybe to become more involved um, and to, to help us to shape some of these critical areas for our students. Um, a lot of the things that you brought up this evening uh, really spoke to me. And with strategic planning, there are a lot of things that we're working on and, and you have some wonderful ideas. And so um, I would be definitely interested in, you know, hearing more about that and your perspective as an educator is so strong. And so for now, my preference is with Mr. Salomon, but um, I'm very impressed with your background. Thank you. Okay. Well, uh, I want to thank you both for coming out today. It wasn't too long before uh, Ms. Marcel that I was in the hot seat. <laughs> And uh, I really, first impressions are big to me, and I feel both of you really did a well, great job in first impressions and sincere coming here for the right reasons. Um, it's a shame we can only pick one. One thing that went through my head, I'm like, 
you know, we're cut up into regions, so you can only have one person from a certain region uh, versus maybe Spen Salem, where, you know, they vote people across the districts because we both are fine candidates offering totally different uh, 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 things to the table, a totally different package. Um, at this point, I'm going to echo what my uh, colleagues here have said as far as uh, um, Ms. Uh, Corinne, you bring the academic background and professionalism and vision that I believe uh, would suit this board well. Um, then we also have uh, a retired police officer, 25 years, where safety is very important in these, uh, in these uh, days, along with uh, being an active PTO president and board member. Uh, he brings a little bit more experience to what would be needed here right now along with the vision uh, or the perspective of being in the redistricting process so so immensely. That being said, I hope you continue to find a way to stay engaged, and I hope we haven't seen the last of you. But uh, at this point, uh, I'm going to side with Mr. Solomon at this point, but I appreciate both of you being here very much. Thank you, Mr. Hidalgo. Um, at this point, uh, it looks like the third majority for Mr. Solomon, but we'll get to, to that uh, with a vote in, in a minute. You know, I would say this, I think you can both do an excellent job here. You've done an excellent job tonight. I think we both make excellent uh, board members. I would be proud to work with either one of you. Um, I think it's unfortunate in this case that we have to make the appointment. Um, and I guess the good thing about the fact that there's an election and they're both coming is that the people who should be making this choice, uh, the constituents of Region 5 will get a chance to do so very quickly. So uh, at, at this point, I think uh, the, the, the better choice for the existing board is Mr. Solomon because he's got the experience, he's got some relationships, he's got the ability to hit the round running. But I would say this, Ms. Curry, um, we don't say stay involved and not, and, and, and not mean it, we mean it. And through the election, you should do that. And I would wish you both a, a lot of luck um, because it, it, you know, the, the public deserves uh, you know, to choose their, their, their person. But at this point, I would support Mr. Solomon uh, for the appointment uh, as well. And uh, having heard the discussion from the board, I would ask one of my, if there's somebody who would like to make a motion. Or would you sure. Like to include name in Region 5? Sure. Sure. And Mr. Cox will correct me if I'm wrong. I move to appoint... Mr. Edward Salomon from Region 5, the Council Rock School District, to the position of Director of School District, a Council Rock School Director, uh, effective immediately. Are we good? Second. Second. Mark's That's good. And Mr. Pilot seconded. For that, may I have a roll call vote, please? <clears throat> Um, Ed Tate? Yes. Mike Thorward? Yes. Denise Brooks? Yes. Mary McKee? Yes. Joseph Hidalgo? Yes. Christine Marcel? Yes. Andy Clark? Yes. Mark Pilot? Yes. Everybody, motion passes 8 0. Uh, congratulations, uh, Ms. Curian. Uh, on being a great candidate tonight. And Thank good you. Good luck in the election. Congratulations, Thank Mr. You. Solomon. And welcome to uh, the Council Rock School Board. We've got the Honorable Vic Petrucci in the back there who's been waiting patiently all night. Um, why don't you uh, uh, bring Mr. Solomon's family up and miss the other calls. Congratulations. <laughs>
You know it's gonna be this fast. <laughs> the pool is just happy she doesn't have to do it. <laughs> so you know what you have to make. I Edward W. Salomon. I Edward W. Salomon. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will support, obey, and defend. That I will support, obey, and defend. The Constitution of the United States. The Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. And the Constitution of the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. And as a school board director, and as a school board director of the Council Rock School District, the Council Rock School District, I will discharge the duties. Will discharge the duties of my office with fidelity. Of my office with fidelity. Congratulations. Dr. Frazier's early school start tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> Negative. You know, I went, I went almost 20 years in this room without saying any words I shouldn't. Uh, this may break that record. Look, I, I, I wanted to compliment the board. I wanted, to, I wanted to compliment the board on this choice. I also wanted to compliment the, the persons running. Um, when you look at the board, it, it has nine members at any one time, and it's a bit of a kaleidoscope. And what happens is the pieces come together as they will, they form a pattern and you work within the pattern you have. At some point, parts of the kaleidoscope go away, other parts come in and you shake it up and they come together and that becomes the new vision. And every time that happens, while you may not know how it's gonna work the first time you look at it, you sit there and you look at it eventually and you say, wow, it really works and it's beautiful. And it really is a give and take for the persons coming in and, and, and the people already there. So I think that's very important. Uh, my choice to leave the board at the time I did was because I did not want to leave at a time between the primary and the general election, in which case it would be open to the parties only to select the candidates to run. So I am glad that both candidates presented themselves tonight. I respect that both candidates will run in the election. I do want to put out the thought that anyone who shows up between now and the primary election wants to run, where were they tonight? And so I think that this process is going to help to add stability. Both candidates came forward in a public forum to, be dis to discuss the topic at hand, which is the running of a large school district uh, with a lot of complexity. 
and I appreciate the board's time to ask them the questions. I appreciate their time and consideration in responding to those questions. So I am pleased, um, you know, when you walk away from something, I still go past my old house in Scotch Plains, look at it and worry about the trees. I haven't owned the house in over 20 years. Uh, the district will be that same thing to me. I'm glad to see the people who are seated on the board. I'm glad to see the new addition to the board. I, I'm glad to see the hands that I'm leaving the district in. So thank you very much. Is there any further public comment? Uh, that said, uh, quick note from the solicitor. There was an executive session prior to tonight's meeting with respect to a personnel matter. There will be an executive session following the meeting on potential construction litigation, potent potential constitutional litigation, and uh, potential tax petition litigation. That's all I have, Mr. Block. Thank you, Mr. Cox. Is there any board comment? Real quick. Welcome. Good luck. Thank you. <laughs> board comment? Since we've been discussing the joys of the policy committee, I'll remind everyone that there's a policy committee meeting on Monday, and it will be fun. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I'd like to take the opportunity, and seriously, to, to, to tell the public, correct me if I'm wrong here, we will be discussing transportation. Yes. So if you're interested in... Good call. Yeah. Bus ride times, if you're interested in how long your child, children have to walk uh, to the bus stop, um, Please show up on Monday night and join that discussion. There's a lot of uh, good work that's going to be done in preparation for, uh, for redistricting. Uh, Dr. Frazier, is there anything you'd like to say? I'd just like to thank both of our uh, candidates this evening. Congratulations, Mr. Solomon. Pleasure to have a new boss. <laughs> As always, <laughs> look forward to working with you. We've worked well in the past. And uh, Ms. Kern, uh, my compliments to you. Uh, I know you're doing fine work. Uh, in your role as an elementary school principal. And uh, for those that couldn't hear uh, our conversation, I said, as a colleague, I look forward to getting to know you better. And that's genuine because of your performance this evening. So thank you both. All right. Thanks, everybody. Meeting adjourned.